Good morning, church. So glad you're all here today. Good morning, those in the viewing audience out there on the internet, here, there, and everywhere. I'm Gabriel Varga. This is the Sunday morning church service of the Ridgewood Avenue Baptist Church and the Daytona Rescue Mission. You're all welcome to come. Everybody needs a church home. The word church means a gathering of people. You can't do it on radio or on the television or on the internet. Ecclesia, it means a group of people that are gathered, so we're gathered. We're studying uh, in the book of uh, Isaiah today, the 53rd chapter, and it's, it's the clearest picture in the Old Testament of the crucifixion, the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. We're going to look at that today. I've been listening yesterday to a, a, a number of the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah. Particularly, I was listening to Isaiah and Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. Isaiah, the most quoted in the New Testament in regards to the Lord Jesus Christ. The prophets of the Old Testament, of course, the weeping prophet, Jeremiah, what did he preach? Doom and gloom. What did Isaiah preach? Doom, doom and gloom. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah also wrote Lamentations. Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. There's, there's the prophets. Doom and gloom. Because it was a gloomy time then. You know what it is now? A gloomy time now. We got a bunch of happy time preachers all around this city. Well, I know about because I'm here. Trying to get, get a happy pace. Come join their church and be happy people. God ain't calling people to happiness. He's calling to repentance and joy. Did you hear what I said? God ain't calling you to happiness. He's calling you to repentance and joy. Don't forget that. Right after church today, I'm giving personal tours to all that are interested of our new retreat camper that is starting, will be starting this next week on retreats. Many of the people that are in church today are going to be going on the retreats. They've already committed to them. Some of you haven't yet, but hopefully you will still. If you're in the Daytona Beach area here and, and, and you want to come around about noon, a little afternoon, give you a tour too. I've got the camper on the on the parking lot here at the church, 501 Ridgewood Avenue. You're welcome to come. Call, call the mission number, 386-252-5570. That's the mission number. And uh, I could talk to you about it. It's a marvelous ministry. We're excited about it. A lot of people are excited about it. So we'll be having those tours after church today. Isaiah 53. Lord, help us. This greatest chapter in the Old Testament. Crucifixion of Christ. The shedding of his blood. Bless us. Save that sinner nearest hell. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord reveal. What it's saying, what the prophet Isaiah is saying, he ain't nobody believing much about Jesus. Ain't nobody believes much about it today. Most of the people I talk to, and I talk to people every day about Jesus, and if you're a Christian, you ought to also. The Bible says, let the redeemed that saved people of the Lord say so. You told anybody about the wonderful Savior today? I have even this very day. Still there. I do regular. 
Not enough, but I work at it. Um, who hath believed? Most know. Verse 2, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. Now listen, get, get the teaching of this. I'll tell you what it's saying. A tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Now, nah, basically this is written to the Jews. That's a little confusing statement, and you say, what does it mean? You see, the Jews then and today are looking for a king to come with the crown and glory, someone to worship and admire. They're looking for a big shot, and they got a humble servant. You understand? That's what this means. They're looking for a big shot. With that in mind, as I read it again, you'll be able to sense it. So listen again as I read it. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of a dry ground, coming from nowhere. He hath no form nor comeliness, no big shot. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him, because man likes glory. Man likes gold. Man doesn't like humility and simplicity. Verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men. That's Jesus. Did you hear it? He is despised and rejected of men. That's why people fight me all the time when I'm trying to get him saved. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows. He was a sorrowful man. He was, he was a broken hearted. He was a broken hearted Savior. That the world, the Jews first rejected him, and then the Gentiles on the most part. A man sorrows, acquainted with grief. Yeah, he had it. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. We say, no, no Jesus, no Jesus, no Jesus. That's what the world says. He was despised. The Jesus of the Bible is despised. Did you know there's, there's hundreds of Jesuses that aren't despised? Did you know that? But they're false Christs. They're antichrists coming in the name of Christ, but they're false. The real Jesus is, was despised and is despised. And we esteemed him not. I'll think of a first-hand report I got from a person <laughs> of true born-again Christians trying to present the true Jesus, the Savior of the world, in front of a mega rally of a, of a ministry called Passion Ministry out of Georgia. And they were having a big shindig at the, at the arena holds 85,000 people. The Mercedes-Benz Arena, one of the premier venues in the country, in the world probably. And there were some gospel preachers out there preaching the real Jesus who's despised, calling people to repentance. And you know all those hundreds and thousands and yea, tens of thousands of people that were going into that arena for their rock fest and their wrong Jesus. You know what they did with the real preachers that had the real Jesus? They mocked them and laughed at them. Go on YouTube. It's on YouTube. These gospel preachers got it on tape. Go on YouTube. 
trying to think of the guy's name from Passion. Louis, Louis something or another. His name's, they don't call him by his last, it's called him Louis. <laughs> Louis Passion, crooked, false Jesus bunch. Laughing at the real Jesus. You get pictured of them preachers trying to preach out in front that were laughed and mocked. They do the same thing. Them same preachers go to Joel Olstein's deal in Texas. He bought a basketball arena. He's only got 55000 He don't have the eighty five, but he gets them every Sunday. This eighty five was just on New Year's, New Year's Eve, I think they did, a couple of years ago. Joel Osteen, they did the same thing there. They got pictures of that, too. Go look it up on YouTube. I, I ain't telling you no story. Joel Osteen, you know what his latest deal is? He's selling weed. Oh, yeah, we Yeah, he said him and his dear... Pretty little blonde wife, Victoria, I think her name is. She says they were they were so they were so troubled. Now here's a guy that preaches positive thinking. He says, if you think positively, you'll be all right. Well, evidently it didn't work for him because as I said, he and Victoria had so many troubles and heartaches that they had to turn to the marijuana. And they found some cheap, and it made them good and high so they selling it to their congregation and the government mad because he's selling it a lot cheaper than the government selling it at these yeah, right, right, at right. these government pot shops on national on uh, international any y'all buy from international you buy pot on international speedway i hear it's cheaper on the street is that true they say it's cheaper and better on it i don't know i don't smoke pot i never did you know why i never smoked pot I used to be a tough guy, hung out in the pool. I was a pretty good pool shooter, too. You know how I made money at pool? I never shot pool and anybody could beat me. <laughs> you just got to major on suckers. You know, I wouldn't drink when I shot pool because you get foggy. You can't shoot so good as you, you know. They, they could fool you all they want. They can show you, uh, they can show you Minnesota Fats and Fast Eddie and all that on the, on the movies, and they're drunk and drinking whiskey. No. Good pool shooters they ain't drinking when they're shooting pool, man. Because you be drinking when you're shooting pool, you be seeing two, three cue balls, you know. <laughs> you go lose your money. <laughs> but in the pool hall, the dudes that smoke marijuana, they come in there shooting pool and they giggle like a girl. I was ain't giggling like no girl. How many of you guys, you giggle like a girl when you smoke marijuana? Any of you? Brian does. He's smiling. Brian, did, Brian, you giggle like a girl when you smoke marijuana? Sometimes. he Yeah, giggle, Brian does. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Mary's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, uh, Mary, Mary's pointing at Carl. You giggle like a girl when you smoke marijuana? Yeah, well, you're here. You're here, you're here. Marcus, how about you, man? You giggle when you smoke it? Well, I'll tell you what, these old big, these old big tough buddies of mine, acting like sissies, I ain't smoking no marijuana, I'm sticking on my beer. <laughs> Let's get back to the Bible. Verse 4. Surely, surely he hath borne our griefs. Hallelujah! He hath borne our griefs. How many of you got grief? I know Brian does. Yeah. Donnie does. Joanne, you got your hand up or are you just pointing? Yeah, Mary got grief. Carl, grief. Jake, that's why Jake's here, my friend. Michelle, you got grief? Michelle ain't got no grief. Good for you, girl. Amen. Hey, friend on the front row. Your name's Louie? Charlie? Don, D O N Don, Donald, like Donald Duck. I'll think about. I'll try to think about Donald Duck. Remember your name. I, I don't know. Why I forget your name. Please forgive me. Hey, I'm old. I'm 81, so that's the way it goes. I'll be 67. 67. Well, happy birthday! Two days ahead of time. Come on Tuesday, we'll sing happy birthday to you. Remind me. Huh? Well, the 19th, that's two weeks. Huh? Today's the 4th. So it ain't two days. Wait. 
Seven. Six. Let's see. Four. Five, six, seven. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It ain't leap year. <laughs> All right, Thursday. Remind me, Thursday. Uh, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Whoa! Glory. Amen? Sorrows. Yet we did esteem him strict, stricken, smitten of God and afflicted, which he was. God allowed it. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is, Facebook. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. And with his stripes, we are healed. Amen. With his blood, we are healed. The blood of Christ cleanseth us from all sin. With his stripes, we are healed. Forgiven. And healed physically, if we need to be. Boy, I'll tell you what. My friend Brian here, his mom called me and you mind me talking about it, Brian, or you'd rather me not? Huh? You don't mind me talking about it? Okay. I don't know, I don't know what caused it, but Brian had a a catastrophe in his life. Sitting right over here, Brian. And he bled out. All of all the blood in his body was out of him. That means you're a dead duck. You can't live. Once you bleed out, you're cooked. Now, his mom told me, I believe his mom, she's a good woman. She loves him to death. He breaks her heart, but she loves him to death. His mom told me that, Brian, that there's no blood in him, so they shot some blood in him, hoping the dude come back to life. Here he is. Amen. And it was, I mean... That's a miracle, man. I mean, you ask anybody that's in medicine, you know the thing, you know anything about that, look it up. You bleed out, you're done. The life was in the blood. Got to have blood. You know, when someone, you know, when they don't know what kills someone, they say heart failure. <laughs> that means you ain't getting no blood through your body. The pump quit, you know. <laughs> That blood could still be in you, but if it starts going around you in your veins, you're cooked. And if you ain't got nothing, nothing to, and you ain't got nothing to pump around in your veins, you, <laughs> that heart gonna quit real quick. It's gonna go, bah, 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 bah. it's gonna go like a machine gun. It can't pump nothing. It's done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's what I text your mother, Brian. I didn't tell you this. I text your mother. God did a miracle for Brian. He should be dead. God's given him another chance. Brian, God's given you another. Now listen to this. I told his mother, I hope he don't screw it up. Did you hear that, Brian? I hope he don't screw it up. I hope this, hope this gold kneeling altar is going to mean something to you. I hope it's going to mean it to all you people that... Come when you come in church, you did that. You say, I ain't heard about that nothing in church anymore. I don't care what you heard about. I'm doing things the way God told me. Whether you like, I got a lot of people don't like it at all. They say I'm Catholic. They're going to bring their rosary beads. No, no, Someone else said they're going to bring a statue. And you ain't going to bring no statue in here. No, I, I got one outside 24 hours a day. Gold, just like, look exactly the same, only it's made out of two by instead of one by. It's stronger. It's going to be written across the top of it on both of them. It's going to put it on this week. Kneel and pray. Repent today. I got all kinds of people that someone, someone sent it up bubbles and hearts. And I'm glad you like it. I think I know who it is, too. God bless you. A few people there watching. Huh? Lawrence Who? Lawrence Wolf with all the bubbles. 
Might be Lawrence Welk. Wonderful, wonderful. You know, he kind of was sissified and sounded like a queer, but I don't think he's a queer. I think he had a wife and kids. But he sounded like a queer, didn't he? Yeah. Lawrence Welk. Yeah. Remember you say, a wonderful, a wonderful. And now, let's a hit it, Charlie. A one, a two, a three. You remember that? Yeah. Was he corny or what? But he was popular, man. He was popular way in that. He's probably still on TV now on them old channel. <laughs> is he still on? Yeah, he is on an old channel. Lawrence Well. I can't remember what channel. He's got all the old. He used to have the McGuire sisters on there and then they got in trouble because one of them started running around with a mafia guy. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to the Bible like my wife always tells me. He was bruised. With his stripes we are healed. Verse 6. All, all, A-L-L, -L, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one of us his own way. And you know what our way is? The wrong way. I get sick and tired of so-called Christians telling me now how good a person they are. They don't need to repent. You know, a so-called Christian that tells me they're okay and only repent. Uh, let me be honest with you. I don't think they're saved. I don't think they're saved. I don't care. You're out there and you mean you're telling like I'm saved? If you say you don't need to repent, because Christians need to repent, just like lost people. Telling you that. And the Lord hath laid on him. Who? Laid on, who'd, who'd, who'd lay all that sin on? On Jesus, amen? How'd he pay for it? With his blood. Not with his death, with his blood. John MacArthur said, it was the death of Christ that forgave our sins. He said the blood of Jesus Christ just uh, soaked into the dirt at the bottom of the cross. John MacArthur is a false teacher. A lot of people follow him. He's a bloodless, any bloodless preacher, any bloodless person is a lost person. The Lord hath laid on him the nick of his all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. You know the problem I got? Open my mouth much too much. I need, I need Joanne says, mm hmm. <laughs> Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. You know what John the Baptist said when he seen Jesus coming down the road before he was crucified? He said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Amen? He took away my sin. How about you? Did you get yours? What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Now that's what you're going to say. I'm going to sing. I'm going to ask the question. You're going to answer me. Got it? Got it, Brian? Yeah. Donald, you got it in front here? You got it, Michelle? Gary, you got it? You, will you get involved in this? I'm going to sing, What can wash away my sins? And then you're going to holler out, Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Then I'm going to say, what can make me whole again? And then what are you going to say? Nothing, Nothing but the blood. Are oh, you got it? Got it. Carl, you got it, man? You on board? Marcus, you with it? Jake, you got it? Everybody okay? All right. Quiet. What can wash away my sin? What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. <laughs> no other Found I know nothing but the blood. Isn't that good? I don't usually get much smiles out of Michelle, but Michelle, she's smiling going like that when I was hitting that high note. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got me going. 
That's the first. I got Michelle smiling. She. <laughs> Holy, hallelujah. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. They beat his face so bad. Isaiah, the same prophet, said that his visage was so marred, meaning his face was so beat up, he couldn't, he could, he would, he couldn't be recognized as a human being. Yet he opened not his mouth. My trouble opened my mouth too much. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. That's what we just said. And as the sheep before her shares is dumb. So he opened out his mouth. You know what they say? I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard a preacher preach it once. I think it might be true. It says you can cut a lamb's throat and he'll lick the blood off the knife. I don't know if that's true or not. A pre he might have been a lying preacher. I, I can't say that for a fact. But I know lambs are m very meek. And I guess to say if you cut their throat, they just shut up and die. I don't know. But but I know a lamb uh, is a very timid animal, you know. And, and, and they're very dumb. They need to be led. That's like you and me. How many dumbbells we got in here besides me? Just two people. The rest of y'all liars. The rest of y'all dumbbells. Compared to God, oh, you think you're so smart. I got a doctor's degree. Oh, shut up. I got a PhD. You know what it is? You know what that degree is? PhD, pole hole digger. <laughs> Anybody else got a pole hole digger? Donnie's got a pole hole digger. I know that. Brian does. I've seen him digging a hole. Pole hole digger. Carl dug a few ditches. You dug a few holes, right, Carl? He's a pole hole digger. Marcus, you have dug a hole with pole hole digger. Oh, I know. I know Jake, a pole hole digger. They, they want to know your credentials? Say, I got PhD. You don't have to tell them pole hole digger. They might, <laughs> they might think it's in psychology or psychiatry or religion <laughs> or humanities. Uh, pole hole digger. I'd rather be a pole hole digger than a PhD screwball. Where am I? And he made his grave with the wicked. Yeah. You see, shouldn't have been no grave for Jesus. You know why? Tell me this, church. What's the wages of sin? Death. So it says he made his grave with the wicked. So he made his grave with the wicked. See, wicked people die. That's death. You don't need a grave unless you're wicked, do you? Because you ain't going to die. But Jesus died. Why did he die? For you and me. You, you understand that? You got to get that. He's only Savior. Not Muhammad, not Confucius, not Buddha, not good works, not Catholic Church, not Baptist Church, not any church. Jesus. The real Jesus. One and only. Shed his blood. Made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence. See, he, he wasn't bad. He didn't sin. Done no violence. Remember? Everybody know who Joseph of Arimathea is? Remember that? Yeah. Joseph of Arimathea, he's a rich man. And, and he took and gave, and he was a believer, a seek, kind of a secret believer. But now he wasn't secret no more. Because he come and sought the body of Jesus and he buried him in his own tomb where he'd never been a body buried yet. So he was, it said that uh, uh, he made his grave with the wicked and the rich in his death, rich grave, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. How many liars we got in here? Me included, you, everybody, all you lie. You people ain't yeah, raise your hand. You're just lazy. You don't put your hand up. You know, I don't know. And the Bible says all liars have their part in the lake was burned with fire and brimstone, which is second death. Yeah. Am I doing okay right now, Sean? That's something that only Sean would know what I'm talking about. I'm doing all right right now, right, Sean? Yeah, I go like <laughs> You don't understand that. I'll tell you something. 
He shall, it says, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. No, I didn't read it all. Let me see. Oh, let me see. Well, neither was it. Yeah. And yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him and to put him to grief. It pleased God the Father to kill God the Son. Because he had to do it to save us. Ain't no other way he could do it. Ain't no other way. Yeah. Yet it pleased him. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, our sins. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. It pleased the Lord, pleasurable to the Heavenly Father to kill his son. Remember, him, remember how Abraham was willing to kill Isaac because God told him to? That was just a picture. But the angel stopped his... God told Isaac, kill him. And he started going down, the angel grabbed his hand. And what was stuck in the tree right over there next to him? A ram. For the sacrifice so he didn't have to sacrifice his boy but god had to sacrifice his son jesus christ yeah he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied all the thing that would satisfy the heavenly father for your sins paid and my sins paid and the sins of every person in the whole world all paid for was the death and the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ. With this, Isaiah 53 is the strongest chapter in the Old Testament to proclaim this. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. Righteous servant died. What does it mean to be righteous? Never done wrong. That ain't you and me. For he shall bear their iniquities. Do you get it? That's my sins and your sins and the sins of the world. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he had poured out his soul on the death. See there? Huh? He poured out his soul on the death. Shed his blood. And he was numbered with the transgressors. Remember he is in, in the middle of two guys, one on the right, one on the left. Remember the one believed and got saved and he said, today you'll be with me in paradise. I remember that? One on one side went to hell, the other one went to heaven. And he bare the sins of many. How many here he bore your sins? Do you know that? Hey, anybody here, how many here know that he paid for your sins? Yeah, he did. How many of you know that? Most of you. Bear the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. That's me. Glory. The most, the most um, informative chapter in the Bible in the Old Testament on the death. Of course, the most formative chapters in the Bible on, in the New Testament on the death of Christ is the crucifixion, the last, you know, last book of Matthew, chapter of Matthew and Mark and Luke. John. Not as much in John. I'm saved! I've found a friend, he is all to me. <laughs> saved by his power divine. Saved to new life sublime. Da, 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 and my joy is complete because I'm, say it with me three times. Saved, saved, saved. Glory. Heavenly Father, thank you. We have this beautiful, perfect illustration of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is my life. He should be all of our lives. We should be focusing on Him. Forget all this foolishness. Forget it. Christ and Him crucified, the shedding of His blood, by the resurrection. I'm in. I'm in and secure. No one can snatch me out of God's hand. I'm a born-again Christian. 
If you're truly saved, you can't lose your salvation either. You're out there, you're here in church today, and you don't know you're saved. Let's get saved now. You're out there in viewing audience, you don't know. <laughs> Holy Ghost is speaking to you. The Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart the God that raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And the Bible says in Romans 10, 13, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Why don't you do it now? I did it April 4th. 1969. April 4th, 1969, I did it. Glory. Thank you, Lord. God speaking to your heart. Let's get saved right now. God speaking to your heart. Don't deny him. Don't turn. Pray the prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross. Resurrected from the grave the third day. To pay for my sins completely. You're seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven where you had been in eternity past. Making intercession for me as my Savior and mediator between me and the Heavenly Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. amen.